Totals for week 15, total expenses were $1,995 at $0.80 per mile. Total revenue was $5,199 at $2.08 per mile. That brought our net settlement to $3,204 to $3 at $1.28 per mile. Welcome back to Truck in the Seven Seas. This is episode number 68. And in this episode, we're going to go over week 14 and 15 of the Landstar Owner Operator Program. So once again, we're going to be covering two weeks in this episode because, well, I fell behind again. The reason why I fell behind is because I took a lot of short loads. So I ended up uh, getting out to Texas. And while in Texas, I started taking a bunch of short loads, as uh, I said I was going to do, and I finally did it. And it was pretty difficult to find the loads, book the loads, get out there, do the live unloads and whatnot and uh make a video so i'm discovering that uh you know those uh, short loads they paid pretty good as you're going to see but uh, it did take up a lot of time so that's why this video is late again but if you're new to this channel welcome i started this channel in order to show exactly what truck drivers make we started as a night transportation company driver moved on to a lease operator working for night transportation now we are an owner operator working for landstar i show all the loads i take what the revenue is, what the expenses are, and what my net cash flow is, and I compile all this information that I put into a spreadsheet that I share with you at the end of every video. So this is a topic that interests you. Follow the channel. But last episode, we left off in Oregon, so we dropped a load out in the Portland area, and then I went and uh, visited some family out there. And then after I was done visiting family, uh, I was searching for a load, and uh, I needed to get out of Oregon because I didn't want to stay there, so I was trying to find something uh, out to the Midwest. And I ended up finding a load going from Klamath Falls, Oregon, to Grinnell, uh, Iowa, and then Ra Grand Rapids, Michigan. So you can kind of see the load. I'll put it, I guess, right here, over here to my left. Um, so yeah, uh, there's a load right there, and I'm going to be looking at it down there, so that's why I'm looking away. But uh, yeah, so it's picked up in Klamath Falls, Oregon. So that was a little bit of a deadhead, but uh, it paid decently. Um, again, ignore the uh, rate per mile there. That one's not, not right. This one paid closer to 250 per mile, and it was 2,200 miles, and it got me out of the uh, Pacific nor Northwest. So I went ahead and booked it. So I just deadheaded down to Klamath Falls. It was like 300 miles or something. Not totally insignificant, but not a huge amount. But for a 2,200 mile load for uh, 250 per mile, uh, I thought that was okay. Yeah, so that's what I did. I went ahead and deadheaded all the way down to Klamath Falls, picked up the load, and now we are headed to Grinnell, Iowa and Grand Rapids, Michigan. So let's go. All right, so after that uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan load, uh, we were trying to get down to Texas because that's where I wanted to uh, kind of run uh, for the week. So I was looking for a load to Texas, and then uh, I found this one right here. Uh, this one picked up in Imlay City, Michigan, which is uh, about 150 miles away from Grand Rapids. It's north of Detroit. Uh, so we picked that one up, and uh, this was actually a pretty uh, emergency load because the guy who originally booked it, uh, the agent was saying his like his mom died or something, so he had to drop it. So not bad. So we ended up going out there and getting it. Uh, it says it paid 320 per mile, but it actually didn't. I think it paid more like 350 per mile or something like that to go to to go to Texas. Uh, so that was you know good. Um, so that's uh, what we went ahead and did and uh, picked it up in Imlay City and uh, dropped it in Laredo, Texas. And it actually uh, apparently Landstar has like a facility there, like a cross border facility in Laredo, Texas. So there were even like showers and it was like a whole like facility. It was like a terminal basically. So I was able to get a shower in and do laundry all that after I dropped it. Uh, so that was pretty cool. But uh, yeah, so we went out to Laredo, Texas, picked it up in Imlay. And uh, yeah, so we're going to Laredo, Texas. So let's go. Okay, so then after the the Rado, Texas load, uh, as promised, uh, I said I was going to do it. Uh, I decided to start running some short loads. I figured the uh, uh, Dallas Fort Worth area, Dallas Fort Worth, Houston, and San Antonio area would be a pretty good uh, time to try this. So that's what I did. So looking for a short load, and then I found this load right here. Uh, again, picked up in Laredo, Texas at the facility there, so it was quick and easy. Um, 
and dropped in Houston, Texas. So look at this one and said, okay, uh, it says it pays $10 per mile. Uh, I don't think that's right. Uh, I think it paid, well, I don't remember what it paid. We'll, we'll find out in the spreadsheet, but it was a good load, paid a lot because you know, it, did, it wasn't going very far, but I think, I don't think it was $10 a mile. Here, let me look, what was it? Yeah, so that was just way off. I think it paid closer to like $3 per mile is what I'm looking at right now. So that's okay. It goes to Houston, which is like the best market in the United States right now. So that's totally fine. Uh, so we went ahead and dropped this one in Laredo and then picked, uh, picked one up and now we're headed to Houston, Texas. Let's go. Okay, so then we dropped that one in Houston, Texas, and then continuing the plan to run some short ones, we found another one going from Hitchcock, Texas to Ennis, Texas. So basically Houston to Dallas, effectively. Uh, this one paid pretty good. It was about $3 per mile after everything was said and done. And uh, that's what we went ahead and did, and did. So we picked this one up in Hitchcock, Texas, and now we're going to Ennis, Texas. Let's go. All right, so then we dropped that one in Ennis, Texas, and then it was started to get into the weekend. So I think it was like Friday when we dropped it or something like that. And I wanted to go ahead and grab a load that got me through the weekend. So I started looking and then I found this load right here. Uh, this load picked up in Louisville, Texas, or Louisville, Texas, uh, which is Dallas basically. And then it's heading to Louisville, uh, Kentucky. So that's what we're doing. So we're heading to Louisville, Kentucky now. Let's go. Right, so after that, it was then like Monday when I dropped that load and uh, continuing the streak of, you know, trying to find some short loads. We found this load right here. Uh, this one went from Corydon, Indiana, which is just outside of uh, Louisville, and it's headed to Warner Robins, Georgia, which is Atlanta, which is a very good market as well. So that's what we're doing. We're headed to Warner Robins, Georgia. Let's go. All right, so after that Warner Robins Georgia load, uh, I got a call from my advisor saying I needed to head back to Phoenix at some point uh, in the next couple weeks and take a uh, basically a refresher course, like a Landstar like refresher introduction course. I'm not 100% sure what it is. Uh, I think it's just basically like 120 day, like come back to class and just go over a few things. Uh, I'm actually headed to it right now as I'm filming this. So I knew I needed to head back west. So what I actually ended up doing after the Warner Robins load, uh, I started, you know, trying to find a load back west. So what I decided to do was go from Atlanta and I made a very wide search radius of like 400 miles or something like that. And I'm like, all right, let's see if we can find something out west. Uh, so that's what I did. And I ended up uh, finding uh, actually this load right here uh, going to Salt Lake City. So this load picked up uh, a few days from when I dropped the Warner Robins load. And I'm like, oh, okay, that, that's good. So it paid like 350 per mile to go to Salt Lake City. And I, I said I would never go back to Salt Lake City unless it paid like 350 per mile, and this one did. Um, so I decided to go ahead and book this one. And I was still a few hundred miles away from Memphis. So, but I'm like, you know what, that's, that's fine. I can get up to Memphis. So I booked this one. And uh, then I started to find a load to actually Memphis. So yeah, so I booked this one right here and then I was in Georgia, uh, Atlanta, Georgia basically. And then I was looking around and it, I ended up finding this load right here uh, going from Kathleen, Georgia to Memphis. So this worked out like exactly perfectly. So, and Kathleen, Georgia was like 10 miles away from uh, Warner Robins. So that worked out really well. So I ended up uh, booking this load from uh, Kathleen, Georgia and we're going to Memphis, Tennessee in order to go from Memphis, Tennessee to Salt Lake City. But for right now, we're just gonna head to Memphis, Tennessee from Kathleen, Georgia. Let's go. All 
Okay, so we ended up dropping the Memphis, Tennessee load, and then, uh, as already discussed, we grabbed a load headed to Salt Lake City, and that worked out actually really well, and I think I'm going to start making that uh, kind of SOP. Like, I do like the longer loads, and these shorter loads, while, you know, they're okay, uh, I prefer the longer loads, and I think I'm going to start doing this, like, coast to coast, where I just have, like, a very wide search radius and uh, find a load going, like, coast to coast. Uh, over the course of like a few days so i'll put the search radius on like you know the first to like the fourth or whatever with like 400 or 500 miles of search radius to where i'm going and then find a load and then get a load kind of a local load uh from like let's say kathleen georgia to memphis to try to get to salt lake and i think that's going to kind of be my sop because while uh running these loads uh these short loads did pay pretty good it was extremely time consuming to find the loads, call the brokers, you know, do all this stuff. And I prefer to be running long loads. That's just my take on it. Uh, maybe they're slightly less profitable, um, you know, a lot more wear and tear on your engine for sure. So, you know, there is that to think about, but uh, I just prefer the long load. So I think I'm probably going to start doing that where I just like search in advance for a long load as I'm heading to an area and then uh, try to make my way there like I did with this Memphis load. So it worked out very well, and I think it's going to be kind of the SOP from now on. Uh, so, yeah, we dropped that load in Memphis, and then that's actually going to be the last load on the paycheck because the Memphis to Salt Lake City load is not going to hit uh, the last week's paycheck. So we're going to go ahead and get to the spreadsheet right now. All right, so as discussed, we're going to go ahead and cover two weeks. So this is going to cover week 14 and 15. So let's do it. For week 14, we did two loads. In those two loads, we got 4,245 miles. We paid a total of $7,275 for an average of $1.71 per mile. Fuel expenses were $821 at 19 cents per mile. Maintenance costs were $671 at 16 cents per mile. Other expenses, workers comp, 72, card feed, $1.75, truck scans, four bucks, escrow, 66, Bob Taylor insurance, 34, license fees, 369, permits, 1058, plates, 32, IFTA, 102, EOBR, 881, for a total of $336 at $0.08 per mile. Totals for week 14, total expenses were $1,829 at $0.43 per mile. Total revenue was $7,275 at $1.71 per mile. That brought our net settlement to $5,445 for $1.28 per mile. Okay, caveats for week 14. A uh, big caveat is this uh, Klamath Falls to Grand Rapids, Michigan load. We did a lot of this on week 13. So, yeah, we started this on week 13, and we, obviously we didn't deliver at week 13, so it carried over into this week. And that's why this uh, week 14 has so many miles on it. I would say in reality we only got about 3,200 miles, but because this one was done a lot in the previous week, that's why there's so many miles and so much revenue. And additionally, uh, this Klamath Falls load, the fuel costs were also largely in uh, last week's as well. So that uh, if you look at last week's fuel bill, this is it right here. It's fourteen hundred bucks. Um, we didn't have any revenue because we didn't actually run technically that week. We didn't finish any loads in week thirteen. But uh, yeah, so fourteen hundred dollars of fuel costs effectively were on last week when they should have been on this week. So this this right here should be about sixty cents per mile or something like that. But uh, it's not because this was done partly on last week's paycheck, so that's what's going on there. Okay, and this maintenance expense right here is just a basic PM. So I had an oil change and a bunch of, you know, just basic PM done on it. I had a, the in-cab air fuel filter replaced and stuff like that. Uh, so that's what that is, just a basic PM. I just stopped at some, I think it was like Boss Truck Stop or something like that. I just had him change the oil and whatnot. It'd been a while. So that's what that is right there. Nothing special. And yeah, that's the maintenance expense. Okay, yeah, so that's week 14. Um, nothing too crazy. We just had a juice paycheck because, as mentioned, the Klamath Falls load uh, was, you know, done largely on the last paycheck. But very good week. Even without that, it would have been a good week. Um, but with it, we pulled a buck 28 per mile. So that's pretty good. So, yeah, that's about all there is to say about week 14. Let's go ahead and move on to week 15. For week 15, we did five loads. In those five loads, we got 2,497 miles, pit total of $5,199 at $2.08 per mile. Land service cut was $2,209 at $0.88 cents per mile. Fuel expenses were $1,195 at $0.48 cents per mile. We had no maintenance expenses this week. Other expenses, workers' comp, $72, truck scans, $10, bucks, escrow, $66, bobtail insurance, $34, license fees, $369, permits, $10.58, Plates, 32. We had an IFTA refund for 
EOBR 27, tolls 143, and an APU payment for $431 for a total of $799 at 32 cents per mile. Totals for week 15, total expenses were $1,995 at 80 cents per mile. Total revenue was $5,199 at $2.08 per mile. That brought our net settlement to $3 to $3,204 at $1.28 per mile. Total since starting the program, total expenses are $27,821 at $0.91 cents per mile, and that is my cost per mile right there. Total revenue is $51,756 at $1.70 per mile. That brings our total profit loss to $23,934 at $0.79 cents per mile. Averages and other information, after weekly paycheck is $1,595, after weekly miles is $2,029, Total fuel cost has been $14,370 at $0.47 cents per mile. Total maintenance costs are $5,760 at $0.19 cents per mile. Other expenses are $7,753 at $0.25 cents per mile. If I kept this up for a 52-week period, I'd make $82,973 and drive a total of 105,000 miles. Landstar's 35% cut has equated to $19,083 at $0.63 cents per mile. Total deadhead is 1,872 at 6.15% of total deadhead. We've been employed 105 days or 15 weeks, taking 17 days off, 88 days on duty, taking 25 total loads, and the average load length is 1,217. Okay, so the caveats for week 15 is there aren't really any. Uh, we did focus on taking shorter loads, so that was the only caveat. Uh, arguably, it didn't even bring my total like rate per mile up that much. You know, I'm looking at it and all of the work I did for these short loads wasn't worth it. Now, maybe I just didn't plan good or whatever, but I was looking, you know, and I didn't like have any like restrictions really. Um, you know, I would pretty much run anywhere. Uh, so I took a bunch of short loads and I don't know. I feel like that wasn't, uh, I mean, it wasn't not worth it, but I feel like I would have done better had I just taken long loads coast to coast, which is probably what I'm going to focus on because this took a lot of time to plan this out, to make the phone calls. And yeah, it just took a lot of time and it was a big headache and it actually didn't pay all that much better. So that's very interesting. Uh, and I don't think I'm going to be doing that again, because honestly, I don't, I don't I'm not sure if it was 100 percent worth it uh, financially. And it definitely wasn't worth the headache. But yeah, it took a bunch of short loads, five to be specific, fairly short, somewhat short. Um, but I don't think I'm going to be doing that again. So yeah, that was the only caveat. Yeah, but there's a week 14 and 15. Um, currently booking loads for an average of 248 per mile. So that is right where I want it to be. So I'm shooting for about 250 per mile before Lancer takes this cut, which is this number right here. And we're currently at 248. So that's good. Uh, and I think it'll probably keep going up to maybe 255, 260. Um, so that's good. So we're actually hitting our goal there. That, so it's two. So when I book loads for 248, my take is $1.70, um, which is you know, okay. Uh, right now, my cost per mile is 91 cents per mile. So obviously you can do the math there. It comes out to 79 cents per mile, but I'm still looking at a fairly steep uh, maintenance bill here. Uh, so it's uh, 19 cents per mile and there's about two weeks of maintenance time loss there. So uh, that's getting down to where I want it to be, but I do believe that will probably drop to maybe 10 cents per mile. And that will obviously bump this up. And I would be, you know, the first uh, month Working for Landstar, I had a bunch of maintenance issues that cost me a couple weeks. So we'll see how it turns out. But it's, things are starting to shape up. Um, 79 cents per mile is, well, it's not great, especially since I own my own vehicle, so I don't have a truck payment. So this number right here, the total uh, profit loss, uh, if you minus, uh, I don't know, 7,500 from this, let's drop that down to 16,000. Yeah, it goes down to 53 uh, cents per mile. So if you had a truck payment, uh, it would drop your total profit loss to about 16,000 and you'd only be making about 53 cents per mile, you know, so that's, that's not good. Um, so that is what it is right now. I don't have a truck payment. Uh, I do believe this number will go up to around 90 cents per mile to maybe even up to a dollar per mile once the maintenance issues completely level out. Uh, so that's okay. Um, but you know, if you own your, if you don't own your truck, you need to understand you'd have a truck payment. And if you have a truck payment, you know, maybe it's $500 a week, 500 times seven, 15 weeks for this one, you could drop that down to about 16,000 and you're making about 53 cents per mile, which isn't very good.
Yeah, but that's just an honest assessment. Uh, this market is very bad right now. Fuel costs are very high, and you know the market's not good. I mean, two fifty per mile. Uh, then Lancer takes its cut; it drops down to a dollar seventy per mile. Uh, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of opinions on that. Um, I'm not going bankrupt, which a lot of people are right now. So that, I got that going for me. But yeah, um, is it worth it? Well, you be the judge of that. You know, I'm just posting the numbers here, and uh, yeah, I just feel it's. Uh, I guess my duty to point out that I don't have a truck payment. And if I did have a truck payment, this would be down to about 53 cents per mile. And if you come to Landstar and you have a truck payment, just note that these numbers do not include a truck payment. So transparency is my thing. I'm just letting you know. And again, I'll, you know, I kind of mentioned it a lot. I'm not bragging about this. I'm not ashamed about it. I'm just posting the numbers so you guys can get a better idea for what it would be like coming out to Landstar. Yeah, but that's going to do it for the uh, profit loss uh, spreadsheet. If you're interested in the spreadsheet, you can download it just by hitting file download and then download it to a Microsoft Excel sheet. And then once you download it to a Microsoft Excel sheet, you can use it however you please. So I mentioned a couple episodes ago that I was going to start cutting some weight. So that's what I did. And I kept track of everything. So that officially ends the uh, trucking portion of uh, this video. And if you're just interested in trucking, thanks for watching. And I guess I'll see you next time. Uh, but now we're just going to briefly go over the spreadsheet. Uh, uh, weight loss spreadsheet that I made. So let's do that. Okay, so this is uh, this, the uh, food log I've been keeping. So I kept track of basically everything I've been eating over the last uh, couple of weeks, really. I'm not going to go over all of this, obviously. I'm just going to go over kind of the totals here. So total calories burned. I'm guessing I'm burning 2,500 calories per week or per day, give or take. So that's what that is. And then, yeah, so this right here is the total calories I burned over the last two weeks, my estimation anyway. So it looks like I've burned about 15,000 calories in excess. So basically lost 15,000 calories is what I'm calculating it, which is 4.39 pounds. So that is just the total calories divided by 3,500, which is the amount of calories in a, uh, in a pound. So this is saying I lost four pounds and this is the average calories I intake per day, 1600 calories. So that's where that number comes from. So I'm burning, well, I'm intaking an average of 1600 calories per day and burning an average of 2500 calories per day, therefore about 900 calories. And if you do the math, it all adds up to minus 15,000 calories or minus about 4.4 pounds, according to this. So that's where we're at. And uh, yeah, again, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, but that's where we're at right there. So now let's move on to the weight loss tracker. So here is the weight loss tracker. So I weigh myself every single day and you can see first weight was 193 pounds. And now the weight is 187. It says I've lost 6.2 pounds according to the scale. I think I was probably just maybe a little overhydrated the first day and a little underhydrated uh, this morning, actually. I don't think it's six. I think it's probably closer to that 4.4 that I've lost. So I think, uh, you know, we'll see how it goes. But so far, uh, this is it graphed out. So, you know, this is these numbers right here are graphed right here and it's moving in the right direction. So uh, that's how that's going. But yeah, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I uh, just wanted to kind of give everyone an update on how that's going, but that will do for this episode. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.